Christmas time, we have, we rent, we have to rent a hall for the family. All the kids are like, Eddie, Eddie, and they're like, you know, climbing up the arms. Do the voice, do the voice of Eddie. So you go, no, I'm not doing it. Get off of me, jeez. You guys are smothering me here. And you'd be surprised how like 10, 15 munchkins can take you down. My car broke down and um, there was this American guy from Colorado with his kids and he offered to take me a ride. His kids ended up finding out I did this. They love the show. I had to do voices all the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> they drove me right to the studio. They were so sweet. That's good. And so here I am, I'm like in, like up in the hills of Jamaica and uh, you know, I see this kid laughing to, to Ed in our show. And uh, so I, I just kind of watched for a second and he laughed and then, so then I laughed in my voice. You know, I'm like, oh, that guy's funny. You know, this kid sort of like stops, looks sort of at the TV. I laughed again and he's like, looks back at me and I'm like, oh, he's funny, huh? He's like, you, you sound like Ed, man. You know, and I was in, I'm like, oh. Yeah, I am Ed. I met Tom Kenny, the guy who does the voice for SpongeBob SquarePants, and I'm a big fan of his show, so I was like, you know, trying to get up to him, just, to, you know, hey Tom, I really like your show, it's really cool. I, you know, so I, and somehow I got across that I did Ed and Eddie, and I said, I'm sorry to take up your time, and I, I walked away. He came chasing after me, he's like, wait, wait, my son is a huge fan of your show! I have to get your autograph, he'll kill me! So I was like, Spongebob? <laughs> That's ridiculous. So I wrote an autograph for him and you wrote an autograph for me. And... We've had two, two kids coming up for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. That was just incredible. One child's wish was to meet the cast of Ed, Ed and Eddie and that was really, oh, really cool. Man. He was a totally cool kid. We would literally shut the doors down to the studio that day, and and we would, you know, we'd ask them what were their famous, you know, favorite foods, and we'd get, uh, you know, pizzas, and and so we'd fill the place full of balloons, invite everybody down, have only their favorite foods here, and then we'd just have a party all day long with the kids. So that's really neat when they can see when you can meet someone, and they they're really excited to meet you, and they they kind of look at all of us, and they, yeah, you do, Kevin, yeah, right, and go, no, dude, I totally do. And it really makes you feel good because uh, um, up here in Canada, we don't see the show. It's not broadcast here in Canada. And so that we don't get a lot of feedback from our audience who watches the show. Uh, and so uh, it's nice when you have that. And it sort of really makes you feel good that you know all that slaving away and going crazy and yelling and screaming all day long to make funny cartoons. It's actually you know, really kind of working out. It's, it does something to people. Our Ed's process of how we do uh, the show is basically, it mimics how the show looks, which is basically uh, exploiting human error and living within a time that I wasn't able to live within, which was the classic era of cartoons. And we just approached it in a classical sense of handmade, hand done, hand everything throughout the whole system of the process. <laughs> the show start off with a brief little premise, maybe a two sentence premise of like, hey, you know, Eddie picks up a marble and, and has the idea of you know, selling uh, marbles as miniature jawbreakers to make a ton of money. And then the premises are given out to individual writers to write a four page outline and that's when the beats are fleshed out and gags are added and it's more about action. And then we move on to scripts once the outline's been approved and then the dialogue's added and all the small details that go into um, the screenplay and the interaction between the characters. Uh, we go from scripts, we go to storyboards, and that's, and at the storyboard phase is where everything happens. The interpretation of the script, the spontaneity of what they're happening, the characters doing what they're doing, the, the, the interjection of, of, of gags, the side threads of, of things going awry on another level while the, that premise is still going through. I mean, it's the fun part. 
And then when the thumbnails have been presented to Danny, they are they're presented in front of the whole studio on a huge like uh, billboard. And we go through it and then any gags that don't work are taken out, any gags that might be present better presented earlier on in the episode are moved around. And it's, it's a huge communal process. We all have a say in how an episode turns out, which is really cool. At that point, that board now goes to our animation directors who time the show, to Korea, who ends up doing layouts, key animation, animation and coloring, at which point all that raw stock footage is sent back here to where we'll sit in an edit room with an avid, put it all together. Then it's put out to our uh, incredible sound design guys at DB Sound and then over to Patrick, who's composer for the show. We mix it down, get it on tape, and it's FedExed over to Atlanta. And the people at AKA, they put in hours upon hours, and all those guys are unreal talent. I've seen them whip up full mural pictures in like five minutes, not even, and it's perfect to spend. So I mean, really, everybody on the show is just absolutely wonderful. <laughs> They're a bunch of geniuses in my opinion. I've had Jawbreakers. I think the only reason I, I chose Jawbreakers because they're like the most horrid candy to eat. It's like, it's like eating a billiard ball. So it's like, it just, you end up cramping your jaws or, you know, it's like you, you popped it in your mouth. You couldn't say anything. And the thing is you could never finish it. And so you had to store it and carry it around with you all day at school in a paper towel or something in your pocket. And I think I, that's the reason why I chose it. What's under Double D's hat? What's under Double D's hat, Danny? I'm not telling. It's, that's, that's the question. Chickens. Yeah, that's... Uh, Ed has a love for chickens. I mean, he just loves chickens. Uh, it's kind of funny, because I don't know what came first, and it's like you go, oh, what, the chicken or the egg? No, but it's like Scott, who, who's a, one of our senior storyboard artists here, has chickens and so it may have come from that or he may have fallen in love with chickens based upon Ed. But it was just really weird. It was just sort of a weird thing. It was, and then it all sort of came from a show where Eddie was making omelets and with eggs and, and Ed just fell in love with chickens. And we've sort of let him have his day whenever it was made possible to make sure that he got his fill of chickens. You know? Cankers are total, uh, the cankers were, you know, oh, I don't want to use their names. Debbie and Dolly, let's just say that. Debbie and Dolly from grade eight and would always constantly pin me into a corner somewhere. You know, come on, give me a kiss. You know, let's neck. You know, that kind of thing. You know, and it's like, you just sat there with your hands sweaty and it's like grade eight. It's a boy in grade eight for God's sakes, you know. The whole thing about them being inventive and creating these wonderful machineries and gadgets and odd and things that they're using with the show, a lot of it comes from Double D, but it also, I play on that only based upon the fact of that, again, it's the, the imagination of kids trying to get something when they don't have it accessibly available to them. You know, it's like a thing of that, hey man, wouldn't it be really, really cool to drive a race car? Well, you don't have a race car, so you end up building a go-kart. You know what I mean? And so that it's that kind of mentality to it. Ed would think the game is shiny. It's kind of surreal to be playing a game that is my life, though, however. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't happen very often, but I'm quite enjoying it. This game is going to be totally cool! <laughs> well, we've, we've put a lot of effort into the game to make it as true as possible to, to the TV show. This game, uh, I feel, is catered to fans in that there's a lot of subtle nuances and different scenarios that are very character oriented as the whole Ed and Eddie series is. Uh, it's broken down into a series of scams and bonus levels where Eddie takes charge of uh, the three Eds and leads them on a 
wild adventures leading them astray. One scam is where Jimmy, uh, we basically kidnap Mr. Yum Yum, his favorite little doll, and we basically say, you know, we, we, it's kind of we hide him and then we say you can't get him back unless, you know, you give us a quarter to get him back. There's one, um, I think it starts out where we have to try and get Rolf's meatball making machine so he can grind up the ice to sell snow cones to the kids to get quarters to buy, you know, jawbreakers. They encounter the same cast of characters that are in the show um, and stuff. So uh, from, from what I hear, this is a secret that we enter Kankerland and that to Ed is not a good thing. So you can um, be any one of the Eds at any one time, but then also we have what we call formations where you actually play as all three Eds at the same time. And so, depending on who's at the lead, if it's Eddie, then when you hit the formation button, uh, Ed throws double D and then Eddie on his shoulders, and they're all like this balancing, trying to go down the street like that. Then if double D is the one who's in the lead when you hit the formation button, then we have what we call trample Ed, where Ed and Eddie throw double D up in the air, and then if Ed is in the lead, it's like a, a whip, and he goes flying around, and they're flying around behind him. It's, the animations are just spectacular. It's essentially the show. That's the coolest thing about it, is it is essentially like an episode of the show. When we're recording the game, I see a lot of the same lines and the characters as the, the show has, so hopefully, you know, they'll, it'll seem like the kids are actually controlling the cartoon. Even in the aspect of it being so fun and so childlike, that's something that we strive to put into the Ed, Ed and Eddie show. And I think it's coming across quite well in just the different scenarios that, that have come up in the game. For me, always working in a 2D world, as much as you're always trying to create a three-dimensional world for, for television, to actually go roaming and strolling through those, those corridors and areas and things, I mean, it's just a killer. I love it. That's awesome. It definitely, on a personal level, it, it turns out ten times better than what any of us could have predicted and we really are proud of this game. Ed! I am cool like a cabbage, guys. No way! It's Blake's turn right now! That was pure genius! Eddie, your face is like gross. Are you okay, Ed? Watching them run around so much is making my armpits sweaty. Hey boys, help Rolf put the souls back in their sty! Playing hard to get, huh? Big Ed, come back! Hey, dork! Say cheese! Well, the game is about Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and it's very true to the cartoon, and it's about these three boys who all have very distinct personalities. You've got the loud mouth, uh, Eddie, and, and, and showmanship, and out there, and it'll, you know, doesn't think before he acts type of scenario, and will do everything once, and if it fails, big deal. If it wins, he's got cash in his pocket. Eddie is, I think, I think, honestly, deep down, he's a good guy. Most people would say, Meh. but um, he just, he's just trying to be like his older brother, who he idolizes. Double D is the neurotic, organized, logical, perfectionist. Well, they said that he mumbles and he was shy, so I decided that I would <clears throat> try and find a very kind of quiet voice <clears throat> and make him very, not quite sure of himself, but very interested in the world. And Ed, slow, watches the day go by, lives in his own world, creates his own fantasies. You just gotta love Ed. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's a character after my own heart. You know, um, he just kind of loves the world and everything in it and everything about it. And so this game is really about um, an adventure. Basically, there's a whole bunch of areas and you have to scam the kid. There's all these different scams. All for the elusive and wonderful Jawbreaker. The goal of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Oh, you're just going to record me recording? Yes. <laughs> That's funny. And today, in fact, we're doing the voiceover recording of the of all the characters with the actual voice actors from the TV show. It's a lot of work. I was sweating in there. Come here. I'm going to show you a few people, okay? Okay. 
this is where the creative engine of the show is, okay? This is Ed, Ed and Eddie Misadventures of, okay? Okay. Cool lemonade. This is everybody right Do one more here. time, just a little bit more worry This is off the Terry, our director. This is right here. 141 take. 137. Here, cool let's lemonade. go in the other room, okay? Oh, All right. Okay. Hey, let's go. Would you tear glass okay. Right. okay. Now don't scare him, okay? Because he's very skitterish, okay? Hi, Double Bay! Hi, buddy! Hi. Oh, dear. Are we still on 141? Okay, thank you. Okay, come on. 140. He can be worrisome at times. He can be worrisome at times. He can be worrisome at times. Ed? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Are we rolling? Okay. I would like to introduce Sam. Hmm. Everybody, this is um, Double D, played by... I'm going to say my line now. Sam Vincent. Thank okay. you. Okay. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Go. Okay. He can be worrisome at times. Usually I sit down, I have a line, I rest for a while, you know, and then they beat up Tony for a while, they beat up Matt for a while, and then I get up and do a line and then I sit down. Ed! But it was me doing line after line after line after line. I don't think that will be necessary, Ed. These laser turrets are much more effective. Whee! Patient said, we'll free you. Nothing like a moment's rest to compose one's thoughts. We can't leave yet. We need to get all the map pieces. Let's see if Jimmy or Johnny can be of assistance. And I can't breathe and I have to get the water. And Terry, the director, is going faster, faster, and all these people staring at me. Whew. It's a lot harder, believe me. I tell you, but it was fun, and it was worth it. Hmm. Sam Vincent is probably the most diverse of the talents. I mean, he's done everything from baby Looney Tunes to another show I work on called Crypto. He has probably the biggest voice range and a uh, very diverse talent and uh, just a really nice guy to work with. Hey, five, four, bum! I smell cheese and onion buns. I get to play Ed. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much every day, you know. Please, Sarah, don't tell Mom! You know, actually, you know what one of the best things is? is well, because it's kind of character after my own heart. Um, but Eddie is always, like, for, you know, four hours in a session, Eddie will be screaming his brains out, and, and uh, you know, Double D will be perturbed and all, you know, things. And Ed just laughs his way through it. <laughs> then I'll have a bit of a rest. And then I'll laugh again. <laughs> I'll have a bit of a rest, or I'll say a line like, you know, Whoa, chickens! And, you know, everything's just good all the time. Oh, I know, I know! We can crawl through the stinky sewers like the bacteria-fusing blob in I was a teenage sludge hippie! Except for when I get to talk about monsters and, you know, and, and uh, that type of thing. Then things get out of control and, you know, Ed becomes the monsters that he's thinking about and describing to the, to the other guys. A conduit to the seventh level of Hades! He becomes everything that he is talking about or what he's feeling or what he's thinking. But it just happens to come out in a very simple type of Ed way. May I have a straw? That was my Shakespeare one. Mad Hill is an awesome performer. He's a high energy performer. He's, uh, he's an athlete outside of the, the show. He's like a triathlete. So he brings that energy to the session. It's a lot of fun. Come on, start acting. I'm here to make sure you do it right. Oh, well, that's Come not on, gonna help. Terry, let's get this going. Let's go, let's roll this stuff. Let's yeah. go. Okay, ready? Oh, let's go. Okay. Energy, energy, energy! Energy! Tell you what, Jimmy boy, I'll help you get your pal back for a cool... Just wait half a second. Oh, the creaking. <clears throat> Tell you what, Jimmy boy, I'll help you get your pal back for a quarter. More conniving. Okay. I'll help you get your pal back for a quarter. Tell you what, Jimmy boy, I'll help you get your pal back for a quarter. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, do one like that. Okay. Tell you what, Jimmy boy, I'll help you get your pal back for a quarter. I think he's on your typical, you know, rabble rouser kid. You know, he's just bored and trying to make action up for everybody. <laughs> right? Hey, shrimp, 
Give me that paper! I think a lot of the time it's the fact that I get to kind of spark the situations. Quit your griping! I knew Jimmy would pay top dollar to get that stupid doll back. So I told Ed to hide it in the house. <laughs> nice job putting it in the window, big guy. That was pure genius. And he's so high energy. Hey! You owe us a quarter! And he can go from like really low to screaming like a girl fanatically. So he's just all over the place. So there's a lot of things you can do with it, right? How would you know? What's it say? Fine! Miserable little runt. Tony, Tony Sampson's very difficult to work with. No, he's a great guy. Tony oh, is, uh, we'll out of all the characters in the show, the one that's most like their character is Tony Sampson. I mean, Tony can be belligerent in a, in a funny way. Um, he can be as crazy as Eddie. He can be as loud as Eddie. And so I think there's sort of deep inside uh, Tony there is an Eddie. Oh, so much. I mean, I even look like him. Hello, do I not look like Eddie? Like Sam Vincent, he looks like a 32 year old double D, right? Matt Hill looks like Ed, except shorter. When they first started, they were nothing like their characters. And now I could say they were totally like their characters. I can see the characters in them. I'm a lot like Ed. I, am, I love the world and love people. And uh, it's, you know, to me, it's like, even if it's raining, it's a good day. I'd have to say that all three of us have very similar traits to our characters. I mean, I <clears throat> I tend to be the guy, even in the studio, I tend to be the guy that's, you know, let's not break the rules, guys. Let's just try and stay on track here and get the show done. Um, I don't think it's a conscious thing. I don't think they, they've done it because it's not like, you know, they live it every day. I think it's just this... I don't know how it's turned, maybe the show's turned around to be more like them, but it, they do, they just fit their characters so well. It was at the end of the day and we all got into our automobiles, right? And and of course, Tony plays Eddie, he gets, you know, he got into this kind of like sports car, ring, just like Eddie, right? And, and then Ed was getting into like a big kind of truck and he was driving away in a truck. And then I, you know, and then I, you know, then I got into my uh, economical four-door sedan. I was like, ta-ta, everybody. See you later. You know, like, days go, look at those guys. They're just like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. They're all getting in the same kind of cars and driving off. No, I'm not anywhere near like any of the Eds. I'm a normal human being. I have a life. No. No, I don't think I'm like any of the Eds. I pray to God that I'm not. Kankers! My name is Kathleen Barr, and I play Marie Kanker. We're coming to get you, boyfriends! My name is Erin Fitzgerald, and I play May Kanker. These lips were made for snacking! I'm Shanice, and I play, uh, Lee <laughs> Kanker. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want to give away the ending. I really like it because it's really neat! <laughs> The boys might get chased, and they might get cast. I'm going to chase Eddie because he's my favorite. I'm going to kiss Eddie. You're going to kiss Eddie with some ketchup? <laughs> the ketchup of love. <laughs> the ketchup of love. Come out, come out, wherever you are. I love a good chase before the kill. Hiya, boyfriend. Time for some smooching. She's very, very talented, very diverse, and one of the few women that can do really believable boys' voices. And so she nails, she nails Kevin. You know, I think as a, as a as a boy. <laughs> yeah, you're nothing like Kevin. You're no. a girl. No, I'm not like <laughs> <Wow>! Kevin. <laughs> I like to think I'm really super cool at times if I need to be like Kevin, but otherwise I can't find any parallels, honestly. Well, if it isn't dork, dork, and dorky. Can it, dork? Let's see how cool you really are. Not bad. We're a bunch of dorks, but the race ain't over yet. Look, a walking zit! <laughs> she moved away on us. She moved to, to Southern California. She comes back up and she does uh, one of the Canker Sisters and she also does Naz. And uh, I think maybe being in Southern California that's helped her because Naz is very carefree spirit and, and Aaron's kind of going that way. Yeah, I'm definitely like May. Definitely. In what way? I think, because I think when I'm at home and I'm like, 
Oh, when I really like them. Oh, I like that very much. Please, can I have some more ice cream? You know, like that's fun. I have no idea. Yeah, you should ask my husband. Yeah, I think I he would no agree. Idea. And then if I'm like out in public, you know, I pretend that I'm not. I'm like, yeah, I'm really cool. Yeah, I put on my shirt. Yeah, I'm really cool. But I'm really not. Not cool. Eat up, squirrel dudes. <laughs> you guys are funny. Dude, what's up with that bell? Shanice Showed is uh, been around for a long time too, and she does um, one of the cankers, and she also does Sarah. She probably, of all the girls, has to yell the most, and so she's the trooper when we have to get Sarah to yell. And when she's nothing like, no, you're carrying, no. you're uh, not bossy, you're uh, actors. Sarah. <laughs> Really? Well, when I you think? there so are little bits. Your inner child, maybe. Mm, you know, dealing angry. with my brothers, right? If they maybe. take to me. Off. Well, that's why it's such a good performance. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, get the dolls! You'd better not break them, Mister. And while you're at it, drop them near Jimmy. It's about time. It's time for dinner. Mom said, get moving. Terry, the director, fabulous. He's the really best director in the entire ever. universe. Yeah, he is the best director ever. <laughs> he's standing right over your shoulder. And <laughs> is he? Can you hold the is cue card up? He's no, the he's best cute. director ever. What does that say? Ever in the <laughs> universe. <laughs> the best. No, we really do love Terry. And he's very good at telling us what to do. Ow, 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 gee, ow, whatever you want. Throw a whole bunch together. That was really good. I really like that. Make the first line bigger and then come down for that last one. That was really cool. This is one of those things you understand the gravity of the situation like uh, Eddie wouldn't understand this at all not too soft on the last break we're on line 120 <laughs> make it huge watching them run around so much is making my armpits sweaty and just make that more of a statement of ha ha and just be disgusted on it little meaner a little more enunciated it's jawbreaker <laughs> Be really brave on it this time. Make it a threat where you go up, you know, you better not. Give me more of a finger wag right off the top. Check out those skid marks. Skid marks are not in reference to underwear. <laughs> the new Ed and Nettie joystick. My job as a voice director is to work with Danny Antonucci, who's the creator of the show, and he boards all the, the show, so we know exactly the timings that we have to get out of uh, the performances. And basically, it's to ensure that the actors stay on character. The Eds aren't really done like a lot of series are done. And so it was like, yeah, I think he was really hip on all this fact of using all these crazy voices and trying and using this crazy dialogue and, and trying to put this all together and, and making it work, making it gel into a show. This is 301 take 54. You have done well, nincompoops. You may now use Ralph's machine. Danny was looking for somebody that was uh, that could do an accent that sounded Eastern European, but we didn't know where it was from. And so Peter was standing outside in the lobby, and I said, Peter, you got to come and read for this. And Danny Antonucci was in the, the, the uh, audition uh, session with us, and he just nailed this wacky voice, which is the Rolf that we know today, and it was just totally out there. Rolf is so complex that I don't even really know where he's from. We've never really decided that. It's just a, kind of a weird voice. You? Lower than a pathetic wee roach, Ed Boy? Do not puncture Rolf's pupper nickel! Weird guy from a weird country with a weird voice and weird everythings. Ho ho! Day late and dollar short, Ed Boy. You do not know of the bounty? There are free job breakers at the candy store! Whatever the Eds do, you can be guaranteed that Rolf will have some other bizarrely sick and twisted way of doing that thing. As current champion, it is your rightful duty to ensure that they do not succeed! You have done well, Ed Boys, but your real challenge awaits! Best victor in a headbutt and you may continue. Yes, the early gal gets the tribe, no? Go away, you vex Rolf. Hello, goodbye. David has this wonderful quirky sense of humor that just cracks me up all the time. And the way he delivers things are just so, so far-fetched, so foreign, but they just work and they're funny. And, and they actually, they actually add another layer to the character, which is pretty funny. In his natural voice, it's this little voice, and we don't even have to overly tweak it. I mean, he hams it up a little bit for the show, but it's pretty funny when he comes out as Johnny, and uh, he loves this plank. Holy moly, look at Eddie's face, plank. Plank says you are tricky. All right, I'll give up the valve. Just don't hurt him. No! Sweet tooth, huh, Plank? Plank says, bring it on, you 
you sissies. Danny's nuts, and you're probably going to hear that a lot. But Danny is a very, he's a dedicated, dedicated um, artist, and uh, he tries to bring that to each and every show. The cool thing about Danny is that he is very uh, specific about what he wants. He is he's such a perfectionist, perfectionist that it, you just know that no matter no matter what kind of a day it is, he's going to get exactly what he needs for the cartoon. I don't know the record for any one line as far as takes goes. That probably goes high up there. Tony had the worst of it one time during a session. I, God, I can't remember how many takes we did. It, it, it got silly, the amount of takes we did. And it was for just a simple line saying, yep good times. I think I did uh, 250 takes of the line, yep, good times. <laughs> no kidding, 250 takes. But the thing was, he had it a certain way, and I didn't mind doing it. I'll do it until the cows come home, until he's happy with it, right? He's like a dad and a best friend and an enemy all in one session, you know, because he'll, he won't move on if he doesn't hear the line right in his head. Which ends up being exactly the right thing, and the kids, I mean, the kids love the cartoon. They absolutely love the cartoon, so whatever it is that he has in his head for the image of, you know, to get the story across is really speaking to the kids, so I really appreciate that. You know, but these guys have just pulled it through. they are really, really done well, and they actually have given the characters heart and soul, which is really hard to do these days in cartoons, you know? We need that. The characters have gone beyond who we are. The characters are these believable, actual, breathable thing. people, yeah, totally. you know? And that's a cool thing. Yes. We'll do like a, let's do like a Bergman thing. Yeah, like let's, you hold yeah, your face like this, I'll hold my face yeah. like this. <laughs> you gotta hold your face like this. Let's talk. Uh, so what do you think, Tony? I just want to say hi to my <laughs> little nephew, Taylor, and I hope you enjoyed the game. Hi, Taylor! Dorks, dorks, dorks! I love you, old bad way. But now I'm putting on my sailor's flesh. <laughs> I mean, look! Even the logo rocks! Look at all the lines I had to do. That's fun. I would like to say hello to all our fans from around the world in as many ways as I know possible. Mm. It's that... <laughs> It's almost half through your nose. Bonjour. Tag, we're it, Frank. Um, guten tag. That makes sense. Smell the characters within what she does. Huh? Put that on a t-shirt and sell it, hey? <laughs> Stop it, boy! You must not sully the circle unless you care to dance with the goat. Konnichiwa. <laughs> it's about time. Um, buenos dias. I can't tell you what I did before I came here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, my. Stores can be so cruel. Dorks. <laughs> Dorks. Cankers. Isn't it interesting that you play the bossiest one? Yeah. But she's not. She's, yeah, not, bossy she's not bossy at all. She's the, the quietest one. person. <laughs> <laughs> and then she plays the bossiest characters. This electronic tool of magic is quite extensive, Ed Boys. I think that's all the languages I know, unfortunately. Does, that, does it say dorks? Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> dorks. <laughs> I can sit there and watch that for hours. <laughs> A canoe. <laughs> I think Ed would really, uh, really enjoy uh, the company of a canoe. Can we go record another video game? This is fun. Thank you for paying attention. Goodbye. <laughs>